forget about it. I'm walking here. <laughs> We're gonna get our ass kicked the next time we go back to New York. On the road we go. No. Headed west. <laughs> Glad you're a better cook than you are, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good morning. So we got a little hike this morning. We're in Watkins Glen, New York, and uh, Watkins Glen State Park, hiking the Gorge Trail. It's almost so much to see you can't just walk and get through. Show me your happy face. Tiger. tiger. Angry tiger. Give me the drama llama. Sad. I'll give you, I'll give you the bird. <laughs> I get the bird? Not that. Don't yeah, you dare. Bird. Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe what you say? That's the uh, that's the, the uh, waterfall equivalent of a uh, consomme raft. It is definitely. I want to get a giant spoon and scrape it off the top. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're a hungry cook, you eat the raft. <laughs> Ew. We're gonna go to the Corning Museum where we work with some uh, blown glass artists. I'm making a pumpkin. This town is on its knees, you know, God is overseas, I'm telling you. Oh, it's more to this than what you see. You know, this town's got the best of me. Are we sure it's the last? Wait, what is it, Dad? Malian? Yeah. It's so weird. Yes. It looks like the leaves are like frozen though. Like the doing stuff? Yeah. But it feels like fabric, huh? Yeah. It feels like if you were to like put like on like one of those like really like comfy shirts, like the long sleeve comfy shirts. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we've just been hiking out here. We're about to turn around. Head back so you can get some school work done? Yeah. What'd you think of the falls? It was pretty cool. Or the gorge, I should say. A lot of falls. Yeah. I wish you could get in it, though. What are, you, are you excited for the uh, glass making class yeah. later? Ooh, yeah. That's going to be so fun. Waterfalls are amazing. It's very good. Yeah, definitely, if you're going to come, come early. Uh, wear appropriate shoes. I mean, it's probably, uh, yeah, wear appropriate shoes. Don't wear sandals and socks. Yeah, we have to see, like, a ton of people with, like, high-heeled sandals or something. come early you'll beat the crowds you know there's a lot less people to negotiate as you're climbing all the stairs so we got here by like what 8 30 9 yeah and so i think it opens at sunrise so come on in early because uh, apparently in the middle of the day late morning it gets packed what are we going to cook for new york got a big cheesecake ew so i think we're going to do a cheesecake with a uh, pumpkin spice crust a perfect a perfect fall cheesecake yep all right, I can't wait to see that. Let's get back. Let's get back. We're doing a cheesecake today. Yeah, and what better time? Obviously, it's fall. It's pumpkin spice everything season. So between pumpkin beers and pumpkin lattes, what's all in here? So I use a blend of two parts pumpkin spice cookies and one part graham crackers, and I just blended them all up. I put in a quarter cup of packed brown sugar, and then an extra little kick of pumpkin spice to just bring the flavor all the way around. So we're gonna mix in the butter. We've got two ounces of melted butter and then Chris will press that into the pan. And so we kind of thought it would be fun with, as we said, all of the pumpkin spice everything. You can eat your pumpkin spice latte now as a cheesecake. So I like these little packets. Uh, not a sponsor, Cafe Bustello. I use half a packet and you just need to add hot water. Does that look good? That looks perfect. So we'll get this all worked in and, and pressed in tight to the sides. Looking good over there, Jeff. I have a name. <laughs> My name is Chris. So while you finish that, I can get started over here. I've got two packs of cream cheese, and I'm gonna blend in a half cup of white sugar, two eggs, 
And then I've got about two ounces of coffee. If you like what you've seen so far and the recipes that we've made, drop us a like, keep that algorithm happy. Also, uh, don't forget to subscribe and share. Uh, you can also find the link in the episode description that'll link to our blog spot page that has all the recipes from all the episodes so far. So the filling's done? Filling's ready to go. All right, well here is your crust. Okay. Let's pour that in. How long is this gonna cook for? It'll take about 40 to 50 minutes. Let's get this in the oven. Put it in. And we'll check back in when it's done. All right, looks like the cheesecake's done. We baked it for about 50 minutes and then let it cool until it came down to about room temperature. I love the color that the espresso has really given it. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. Ooh, yeah, that crust feels good too. Oh, I want a big piece. All right, perfect. Uh, oh, yeah, look how amazing that comes out. In true PSL spirit. We're gonna do a little bit of whipped cream on top, just like you get your your lattes, and then put a little bit of extra cookie crumble right on top. Espresso cheesecake with a pumpkin spice crust. Oh, well, let's dig let's in. Let's dig in. Mmm. Good stuff. Just the perfect balance. Van, I think that was the first time we've actually gotten you to try cheesecake. Yeah, I said I would try because pumpkin spice and coffee is something I like. Mm, that crust is like the best part about it. Like just the dark pumpkin spice, and like the, it's just really good. Mm. Corning Museum of Glass today. Make your own glass studio. We're gonna be making our own little glass ornaments and objects. So check this out. <laughs> Wait, you're not part of the exhibit. Several days later. Let's see what we made. No, no, I want to rip it. Ta da! Whoa! Ooh. Super cool. Hold it up, let me see. I like how that turned out. It looks like a Minecraft diamond. Right? But like 3D. What did you make? I made a pumpkin. <laughs> I love all things Halloween and spooky, so that was right up my alley. Um, spooky. spooky season. So I chose um, for my, the, you get to pick your colors, and I picked uh, purple for my main pumpkin color with orange accent, and then green for my stem. Oh, look at that. I'm really excited with how it turned out. And That's um, super cool. I love the stem on it. I know. It's Caitlin who helped me and did a fantastic 
twisty job on my stem and I gift it because yeah, cool. it's really pretty and I think I have an idea of somebody who might really enjoy it. Look at that. Well done, sir. Yeah. Thanks. It was fun. It's something I've always wanted to do. I've always been super intrigued and, you know, uh, it's just been always like one of those arts that I've always been super um, drawn, drawn to. Drawn to. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> drawn to and definitely wish that, you know, I uh, had uh, the time or had, I don't know, it's like most people are like, I wish I'd have done that. But well, when you don't have the exposure to it, it's really hard to get into. Well, I guess it's like cooking, right? If you're, if you're, you know, I'm, I'm a chef and I like to cook and that's what I'm passionate about. And so it's like, you're drawn to those things, right? I guess right. if I was really drawn and was passionate about glass, you know, then that's what I would have gone and done. So typically it seems like the folks that we were talking to there, they're in Corning, they're at that school, they're at the museum doing the work because glass, that's what they love to work with. It was super fun definitely would do it again and like i said these pieces they're actually is just 34 bucks i think mm -hmm. plus tax so which from what i've noticed is actually that was cheaper than what you could buy these for so for the experience of actually doing it and getting to work with the glass and you know being able to like be in the hot shop and work with the other artists in there definitely think it was more than worth it to to do that and to have the experience and then you get to have something cool to take home with you or give as a gift There's a uh, special on the Syrah by the case. Hit me again. Looks like I've got the uh, unoaked Limburger. I don't know why it makes me think of Limburger cheese. Me too. That's I was just going to say that. I'm like, like, I hope it doesn't smell like it. <laughs> <laughs> it same, doesn't. Same it was reason. very peppery. The last one was too. It was very subtle, but like the shortest finish. Not to, not to throw shade, but the last place is portion were very small so it was hard to get a, a good read on anything but mm, I like that mm. super like pepper forward I like this very classic Chardonnay definitely right up my tree Valley right up your vine right up my vine <laughs> we're literally only having thimble shot sized glasses it's not like we're tipsy we're very uh, responsible. <laughs> it's funny, I went one way and you went the other. <laughs> very responsible. You're like hilarious. <laughs> green bell pepper, peppercorn. It's very young red. Yeah, green peppercorn, right? Yeah. yeah. Go very well with a steak au plum. Nice green thick green bison burger. Mm. That would be good. Being from West Coast, having had those prior. I am not drinking any fucking Merlot! Okay, okay, relax. It's so fancy. Um, it's a very different dry Riesling out here. There's no like effervescence with it. There's no sweetness really in the undertones. Um, the second one we had had a little bit more sweetness than the first one and this one. Actually, out behind us, um, which you can see if we pick up the camera a little bit, out behind us, see uh, out in the distance, that's uh, Seneca Lake. We should have brought a track on. <laughs> that's uh, Seneca Lake, Finger Lakes Wine Country. Right. They call it the Seneca Wine Trail around mm. this side, but it is uh, Finger Lakes Wine Country. And there's definitely, I mean, I don't know what's on the other lake. I know you may have looked, but there seem to be easily 20, 30 plus vineyards. Yeah, so on Seneca Lake, we're only on the western side of the lake. There's a whole nother trail gambit up on the eastern side. Mm -hmm. um, so there is so many. Spend the day for you sure. can spend a week. Great time of year. I don't know what time of year they consider to be their peak season here, but uh, it's beautiful. The weather is so nice. And so. and so if you're enjoying this as much as we've enjoyed these wines, drop us a go ahead and give us a like, drop us a comment, subscribe. We'd tell your friends, you. tell your family, whenever you're out and you're discussing, you're like, man, I saw these really cool, kind of dorky <laughs> folks traveling with their family in an RV. And... Uh, no, because I don't usually do old porch restaurants. Basil. We'll see you in Buffalo. Yeah. Bye. Being around Buffalo, like, I mean, as a chef, like, how do you even go so far as to come here and not, like, make buffalo wings, so. Got a little grapeseed oil, high smoke point, cook at a lot higher temperatures. And then what I like to do is always like just to mix up some little flavors and stuff like that. So what I've got here, I've got some uh, Meat Church Barbecue out of Texas. Uh, their Holy Voodoo Blend, which I'm a big fan of. Not a sponsor, just really like their products. So we're gonna throw that on here. Nice, healthy, 
liberal dose of the meat church, holy voodoo, and then one of our family's favorite spice that we put on a lot of things, veggies, meat, chicken thighs, chicken wings, everything bagel seasoning. You got all your good stuff in there, right? All right, so we got our everything bagel seasoning. We got our holy voodoo from Meat Church. We're gonna mix these really, really well. Got the grill getting hot. Let's throw some wings on. Okay, for our wings, we're gonna make a uh, wing sauce that I've been making for a while. So I'm using Cholula, just a regular base hot sauce. You can use Crystal, uh, you can use Frank's if you like. We had Cholula laying around, so we're gonna start with that. So you got your hot sauce. To that, we're gonna add sweet chili, like Thai sweet chili sauce. And we're talking about a half a cup. Honey, one big nice tablespoon of honey. We actually, here we have a uh, fortune to have some uh, nice local honey that we got on our trip. This is actually from Georgia. So obviously it's gonna have a little bit of sweetness, right? The honey and the Thai chili. Got a little bit of heat. It's got some jalapeno in there. It's got some fresh cilantro. And we're gonna add a little creamy vibe, a little creamy texture to it with the addition of some chunky blue cheese. All right, so we've got our honey in. Two tablespoons of some nice chunky creamy blue cheese uh, dipping sauce, if you will. I always like to take a nice, nice little healthy pinch. I love fresh cilantro, stems and all. I'd say that's about a quarter of a bunch right there. We're gonna go ahead and mix that in there as well. And then we've got a half of a seeded and diced jalapeno. Hot sauce, Thai chili sauce, honey, blue cheese, cilantro, and jalapeno. Let's get this thing blended up and go check on those wings. I like to stop a couple times in between blends just to shake it up. All right, what do you think about those? I don't know what I think. It's about time to go inside and watch some football, crack open ice cold beer, sauce some of these wings, and let's get our little uh, appetizer grub on, shall we? All right, there we go. One in Buffalo, make Buffalo wings for sure. Blackstone griddle, man, you really can do anything with it. If you're cooking bone-in chicken, which we've done a couple times, wings, just turn it down low. Did a great job with these wings. We've got our wing sauced, a little extra cilantro on there, because I love cilantro, and then I also topped them off with just another little sprinkle of everything bagel seasoning. The only thing left to do now is enjoy. That's really good. I gotta find a wet nap. Lindsay. Christopher. How good are those wings? They're so good, I'm letting you videotape me with them all over my face. Actually, your face is pretty clean. I felt like I was wearing the sauce for a second. Oh, there we go. Well, I did have to wipe some off you. <laughs> We're making our way down to the uh, Made of the Mist boat ride. Should be very cool. Takes you down to the base of the falls. Does this exceed your expectations for water and rocks? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. You guys ready to get wet? Oh no. That was 
pretty cool. Like nothing else. That's just the worst. If you're uh, in the area and you're planning, you're like, eh, let's do it. Take the boat. So what do you think? Definitely worth all of the uh, wetness and waiting. Out of every little like tour and things we've done so far, that might be the coolest. I figured we were only like 20 minute drive to come up to Lake Ontario. Why wouldn't we make sure we get to see and dip our toes in all the great lakes? Check one off our list. Van actually liked it too, thought it was pretty cool. Found him an old shotgun shell washed up on the shore, so he could add that to his collection of things he's found on our trip so far. Next we'll be just outside of Cleveland, check Lake Erie off the list. right on the shores of Lake Erie. It's another great lake we get to check off. I think I need more coffee. We gotta get on the road and we're driving today to Michigan, just outside of Ann Arbor. Gonna see uh, my friend Frank from culinary school, check out his restaurant, and then uh, we'll make our way north uh, to Mackinac City. We're there for about a week and we'll be able to check out uh, some spots up in the UP before we venture into Wisconsin.